Hi everyone, welcome to that third video about the multi-clock. Uh, uh, I found something super interesting for me today and I wanted to share it with you. If you hesitate to put 500 euro in this thing, it might change your mind. And uh, if you're already convinced, you're going to buy this thing anyway. But if you're not interested in the multi-clock, uh, that video might be a bit boring. There's not going to be much music going on. So previously I had the Keystep Pro and I had some offsets that multi-clock solved. But I have other problems with uh, uh, Keystep Pro. There's no way I bring this on stage. So many bugs on version 2.0. I have no idea why you take your customers hostage with a better version and it's so bugged. Uh, anyway, that's another subject. This is the Octatrack. Now I'm trying to synchronize both and I want to measure how they do. So I set everything to zero. This is my master obviously and those two guys are slave. On the left side I have a kick and I made sure that the sample start is already inside the sample so I just have a, maybe a clicky sound but at least I'm sure it's super sharp going out. The Tempest on its side has all its envelopes set at zero and I have Tempest going to Octatrack. This is also worth mentioning because it might take a bit of a process to go in and out. So we're ready to go. I'm going to press play, one bar record, and just measure those two waveforms. Alright, let's stop that. Let's zoom in and you can see that's pretty good. That's dead perfect actually. Let's zoom in like crazy. That's perfect. That's yeah. I mean, if you want to measure it, it's not in milliseconds because it says zero. I have to switch to sample and I read two samples here. I don't know why. It's just been crazy measuring this here and there. Yeah, some samples, ten samples, something like that. So there's no way you can hear uh, any offset. So I thought, yeah, but look at that. My my setup is zero. So basically those things are in sync. I might just do that and <laughs> like a traditional way just have the master uh, on the Octatrack uh, and uh, slave the Tempest and bypass 500 euro and buy something else, right? So now Octatrack is master and I'm going to do the same. Record these sounds and see how it goes. Record, play, and I don't know if you can tell, but I already can hear that tickling effect from uh, an offset. So you zoom in, and yeah, you can see it. So yeah, this is an offset. Now if you're looking at this, and you're, yeah, but really, there's not much. Uh, consider this, the bottom waveform is the Tempest Kick. All right, so that's the the attack of the sound, the transient, say, that I'm, I'm, I'm coloring here. And this is the, the, the tail, the, the sub, if you want, behind. So this is the transient. The transient here measure in milliseconds, 7 milliseconds, which is exactly the length of the offset. So basically, it's almost like having your sound doubled. You, if, if you have two snappy sounds, like a kick and a snare, they hit together, but you have that type of delay. Imagine Octatrack does the snare, Tempest does the kick. Then you would have that type of effect. Snare would play a transient before the, the, the kick, and you would have a not a kick anymore, but a click. So I don't want that. If I want to click, I can program it, and I'm super happy to have that type of sound. So, yeah, the, the surprise for me is traditional synchronization Octatrack as a master, Tempest as a slave, 7 milliseconds offset, and I can't manage it. So, that's why you need <laughs> the Octatrack. And now, honestly, I understand the reviews they have on their website, a bit extreme, saying, oh my god, it solved my life in my studios, my stuff are back in sync, you know, <laughs> too much. But yes, it is. Everything's set to zero, but it works. And if you need something big, you might have, for example, not a connection here, but I might have this going to another sound card and you have a buffer there with another few milliseconds delay, then you can deal with it. So that's it. I uh, hope you liked the video. Um, 
it was super interesting for me now. I know that I have to work with, uh, with the multi-clock as, as my master clock, whatever the setup. The only thing so far that I critique, apart from the price, is those buttons here. So if that's the center of my, my system, and I know that it's not uh, advertised like this uh, on their website. They say it's more like uh, you have a plug-in you know, on a computer and it's going to control your, your multi-clock. So you might not want, you, you might not use these things because it will get the transport from your, your software, I guess. I don't know because, all right, three critiques now <laughs> with the multi-clock. A, the price. B, I was not able to manage the VST plugin on New Windows. Send a request two weeks ago, no news. And the third one are the buttons because I'm using this without software. So I want this button to be my master play. It's a shitty button. <laughs> I can't press it and make sure it's pressed in a live situation, in the dark, and you're just not sure you're pressing it. I want a, a bigger button. I'm not super excited about that, but anyway, that's the only critique I have about the thing. Hope you like the video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next, in the next one.